fellow YouTubers, and welcome back to Re-E's Retro Toys. On today's episode, I'm heading over to Mount Airy, Maryland to go to the Toy Exchange. I've been to this place before uh, several times. I used to have to come out here for work, so I would stop after work and look for some vintage toys. That was before I did my channel, though. Um, so I thought it was a nice day to go back and just check it out and see what they have. It's been years since I've actually been to this store. I remember the owner being very nice, a uh, good guy. I know that he's into trains too. I think he has a lot of model trains and things like that. But he has, uh, from what I remember, a good Star Wars selection and a uh, good overall vintage toy collection. So uh, let's head on over to Mount Airy and uh, see what I can come back with. Wish me luck. I arrived here a little early. The shop is not going to open until noon. So I had to find myself a quick lunch here. I got my maple protein bar. It's a relatively poor substitute for one of my favorite donuts, which is a maple cream long john donut, uh, which I can't seem to find where I live, but Western PA has them in abundance and uh, they are definitely my favorite donut. So protein bar, the little uh, Roman Reigns energy drink, <laughs> and I will be ready for Toy Picking Paradise. Yes, here's the toy exchange here in this plaza in Mount Airy. So we're going to go here right now. All right, guys, here is the front of the store in the strip mall here in Mount Airy, Maryland. And here is kind of an overview of what you see when you first enter the store. Uh, the left side is all of their toys, their vintage toys, and uh, somewhat modern. And then on the right is their train section and die cast vehicles, older toys, like from the 40s and 50s and 60s are featured on the right side of the store. Um, so my video pretty much focuses on the left side of the store. That's why you really don't see much of the other side because I am focusing on the, the toys of our childhood and the toys that everybody on my channel really wants to take a look at. Um, you can see the trains there over on the other side. And what's cool about the store is that they actually hang their ships from the ceiling, which is pretty cool. And here is kind of a, a shot of the front train table that he has set up as you walk into the store. And then behind me here, this is the wall of relatively vintage, somewhat modern figures. Um, a lot of reissues. They have a lot of Star Wars, Power of the Force, Episode One, Power of the Jedi figures. Um, they have there here. We have some Super Mario Brothers movie figures and Terminator figures. Here's a few Aprils on card, <laughs> the lesser expensive Ninja Turtles, if you will. Uh, some of the Ghostbusters reissues are hanging up here. Marvel, Marvel Legends. There's some Mars Attacks figures. Star Trek, some modern Masters of the Universe, tons of modern Star Wars here. I was trying to take a peek at some of these Clone Wars boxed items. Like these battle packs, I just picked up a few of those battle packs at the Frederick Comic Con. There's a Naboo fighter from Episode 1. I actually don't have that in my collection, that's why I was checking it out. And of course, it wouldn't be a toy store without rows and pegs filled with modern Star Wars figures. 
And you have to pay, pay attention because he does have stuff on the floor there, boxed. He has some modern loose figures bagged up in the bins. There's the 2003 series Giant Ninja Turtles in the box. So those were kind of cool to see. This is in the middle of the store. He has this giant uh, female gremlin statue, as well as this giant E.T. And in between them, hanging hanging from the ceiling, is the Black Series TIE Fighter. And here we get to the gold, guys. Uh, the rest of this video is pretty much going to feature what they have on the shelves in the back, in their glass cases, and it's all just phenomenal vintage gold. You can see here some of their Masters of the Universe figures, uh, and he has some rare ones too. There's Thundercats and Black Star on that bottom shelf there. And this case has tons of random action figure lines. And here's a shot of that corner. Again, items hanging from the ceiling. See, unlike d and &E, though, d and &E, you can actually access the cases from the front. You have to have the store clerk get in the back of the case and take things out for you, which really isn't a big deal because they're super friendly and, and willing to help you out. There's some Rambo. Uh, above them, you saw some Sectars. And more Black Star. There's some karate kids there. There's a carded in humanoids, which is pretty neat to find. And this other case had some battle beasts. And uh, the real Ghostbusters. Lone Ranger. Migos. This top case had a lot of the She-Ra figures. And you can see behind the glass cases are tons of boxed play sets and vehicles. There's some mask back there, Thundercats, He-Man, just so much good stuff. Uh, but from here on out, guys, I start talking to the other people in the store. So I think it's probably best to just stop the narration th at this point and go ahead and listen to the background noise and, and, and listen to the conversation. I think you'll enjoy it. Have fun. Else, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I come in here sometimes to get it. What's your fix? Star Wars, yeah. Me too. Vintage stuff. I just. I'm kind of, I mean, I completed the, the original run with all the last 17. Yeah. And I didn't even care about weapons or anything. I just wanted to really? Because none of my figures have weapons, so I just like, let me just get the original weapons. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get them complete with the original weapons. No no reproduction or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, um, the, the droids now, I'm kind of, but those are crazy expensive. I showed my friend that. And I remember as a kid, so I was like 85, I was 10. Mm -hmm. And I'd see it in the store, I'd be like, that's so ridiculous. And, and now, don't you wish you would have bought a 3PO and left them in the package? And that even took them out of the package. <laughs> I showed my friend that, like, you get I don't even like the figures. Yeah. So I start collecting even the newer stuff. And, this is what I and I was just like, you know what, it's just too much. Now. I'm just like, let me just get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> I have no yeah. reason. Well, it's, I gave some to my kids. It's, it's overwhelming. Yeah, I had some duplicates and broken yeah. original ones I gave my kids. It's almost like a stationary motorcycle. Yeah. And you put the, the heads on the big IMAX. My wife is pretty gracious with, with the whole thing, so. so. And you actually feel like you're
time and respect and stuff like that. It's like, okay, well, big deal. Right. Something else will be out. But I mean, that was the primary means of transportation. Same with the blurgs. Yeah. Why can't they make a blurg? You know? Yeah. They've been around since the Ewok movie. Caravan of Courage, or not Caravan, but uh, Battle for Endor. Uh, yeah, I mean, <coughs> and you could even you could even make them. They could have made what they what they should have done was with the, the vintage or the retro looking figures that are coming out. Yeah. So if they had done a, uh, like a retro blurg that the characters could sit in, that'd be great. That was made like where you actually had to push the little slot inside. Yeah, like a do back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that. That would have been really. Cool. Yeah, that's a good idea. Didn't one have like a oh, cart yeah. too? Didn't it, didn't it pull a cart? Isn't that how the Ewoks used it? Well, and, and, well so they, 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 they had a cart with all the parts on it. Years ago, you would have paid next to nothing. I don't, I don't remember the, the, for the Blurg and the Ewok and on Endor. Oh, uh, so that one yeah. I don't remember. Because I haven't suffered yeah, through the whole movie in a while. They were talking about the original <laughs> model of that. I guess they scanned it in for Mandalorian. Because uh, Phil Tippett still has it. Oh, yeah? In the studio, yeah. Nice. Or one of the cards from the studio. Um, dealer. Oh my god. So, there's, there's a couple YouTube videos where he recently walks around. I don't care. I know, I know some of the cards that work. And he doesn't really tell you he's going to until the end. He's just like, well, here's, here's the number three ATAT and number one ATAT. Like, what? And they have like, what? <laughs> and they're, they're different sizes and they've got the wire thing inside so they stay still when they move them and all that. He's just got them sitting on top of a cabinet. Did you ever see the the Star Wars Revisited? Those we're going to keep it in that book. Basically, it was a. Was it coming out to this? No, so this yeah. one's just some There's more people. I don't know what it is, but is that is that a is that a fair assessment? I think so. Yeah, like Florida seems to have a toy show every single week. Uh, oh, and it's the weather too, right? Yeah, it's probably you part can, of it. But have them is, year round there. Yeah. Point is, we moved my mom to Florida last year, and I got to go in November to help her. And I was like, I gotta go hit some of these toy places I've never been to in my life, and it was unbelievable the stuff I was finding. Jeez. I picked up a um. The cantina set, the cardboard for it. Oh figures, yeah. But it had all the pegs, and it was a little water damage. Hundred bucks with the box. That's not bad at all. Yeah, it was. It was a steal. <sighs> Any box Star Wars stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's why I bought all those card backs yesterday. Um, and, I, and that, yeah, that's what you picked up at the toy show. Yeah. So I, let me see how many I buy. Eleven. No. <laughs> that would be nine. Uh, I made hundred dollars on it. Uh, and I got Hard some backs. parts that are going to come off. I'm going to get the parts off. I'll probably use it for a thousand. And I'm going to be missing basically shape, when we're yeah. all said and done. The microphone. Some of the clips are the reduction. Still the bubble uh, on but, uh, you know, at least it's holding together. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this, this, this can yeah, vary. If somebody takes the time to move that up and re-sticker it and all that. Look how nice that on is. I had one two weeks ago. I got all these back The box was crispy. Sold that one for fifty nine dollars Yeah. Slightly, a little bit. Cleaner, but oh, yeah. eh, it's about the same. <laughs> and I'm into some weird stuff too. Here we're buying. Roll cops starting to get big again. And he's got he's got a couple carded cops and crooks back there. Yep. And know. if you're looking at any diecast stuff, there's a thing that's hidden down with the train stuff over here. Uh -huh. There's some Bond cards in there, and there's a. Uh, I probably need to just buy it today. There's a uh, Buck Rogers diecast fighter in there. Oh, nice. <laughs> Some LJNs. You get into wrestling at all? No, not me. I'm no? Not, no, not a wrestling. I was forced to watch it through some friends and stuff. Never <laughs> forced? Me. Yeah. It was mildly entertaining, but I think it was one of those deals where we had a cheater box when I was a kid. Oh. So, so I was like, hey, we're coming over to your house to watch WrestleMania. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, this is a everything. And they got Lone Ranger. You yeah. got some Battlestar Galactica, Battle Beast, Visionary, Supernaturals. Yep. Lone Ranger, Ghostbusters. Yeah, I, still have a, I gotta get me a gold Cylon too. Battlestar Galactica is another one. That's, yeah, that's sort of a big one for me. A little dusty, but it's it's there. From but then the original, the better paint job, and no electronics. <laughs> <laughs> 
Cool. Yeah, I'll probably on the bottom, you can see where the battery compartment is for the original. Okay. It still opens, but it, there's nothing in there, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. It works here. Cool. Such a cool, cool. ship. Awesome. That's the only one I have. Do <laughs> you have any batteries? You can test it out quick. No, it doesn't doesn't have a oh, trunk. It have it. oh, That's just it. left over from the the vintage gotcha. mold. It's exactly the vintage mold. That's okay. the only difference. No electronics in the paint job is different. Gotcha. Yep. Cool. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. The original one was just one with stickers, right? It was stickers. Yeah, right? it had stickers and it had the nice red paint, the, 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 the squadron markings, but the, all the nice gray and the dirt and the, and the grime and the, the weathering is all like $400 oh now. It's insane. What did it cost me? I think it was like 60 something with tax. Now, one thing I did buy from Marty though was a sand crawler for 100 bucks last year. A vintage sand crawler? Mm hmm. He had it in the junk. Here it is, right here. He had it nice. in the junk and it didn't have the ladder. I was able to find it later. It had everything else except for the ladder and the remote. And I found out with that. That Toy Biz Batmobile? Yeah. It's the same exact frequency. So if you ever have one without, go get yeah. yourself That is awesome. Sorry, just close the no, no, it's same fine. Frequency it's fine. It's just happy. Well, you asking <laughs> on the, uh, the Rambo and the Traveler. When I got 45 on him, he's complete. He's in yeah. good shape. Right, guys, so I just came out of the toy exchange there. And got some great stuff here. Some mask, sectars, Rambo. Anyway, I'll give you guys the lowdown when I get back to the homestead. Okay guys, so I am back from the toy exchange and what a fun trip that was. I met some great guys there. The owner and the employee there were nothing but friendly and helpful, fantastic people there. I even met some random guys there that were just shopping and we started talking and you probably heard them on the video talking beside me. Um, that was several other people. Uh, they were so friendly in there and I had a really, really good time. Um, and it's only about 50 minutes from me, so it's not like I have to travel all the way up to Pittsburgh like Dean and E, whom I still love, uh, but this store is, is really great as well, and I'll definitely be returning, that is for sure. So first up, I got this 100% complete with box jackhammer vehicle from series one of Mask. This is a Ford Bronco. And this is a Venom vehicle, not a mask vehicle. A little close-up of the box here. Incredible artwork, as expected. There's that. And then it gives you the details of the armored attack mode of the jackhammer. Additional features on the bottom of the box. Love that. Also inside are the uh, second comic here, the jackhammer instructions, and the mask collector's guide, which folds out into a pretty wicked poster. And here is that mask poster. We have all the different vehicles from Series 1, Boulder Hill in the background, Thunderhawk, there's the Jackhammer, and then on the other side you had all of the Series 1 vehicles that you could beg your mom and dad to buy for you. So let's get to the features here of this vehicle. It rolls very nicely, very nicely. And um, so I'll show you the driver here. This is Cliff Dagger and the Torch Mask. He's a pretty bad dude from Venom. Take his mask off there. There he is. He's got his eye patch. And as we have learned from movies and cartoons, anyone with an eye patch is obviously evil. And so Cliff Dagger. Uh, fits the mold there. Put his mask back on. There he is. 
And of course, both doors open on this vehicle. And uh, first things first is you take this button here and you kind of push it up like that. And so it creates a barrier on the windshield and then it drops this down. And you can see the Venom emblem there and two turret guns right there. And what's great is that when you roll it, they shoot out like that, which is awesome. Not when you go backwards, only when you go forward. And then the action mechanism is this back bumper here. You just press on it, pops up like that, reveals two guns there, and this little turret here, it can go all the way around in a circle. The seat flips out right there, and inside is another gun. Just kind of dump out of there. So if you're looking to complete this vehicle, make sure that this gun is inside of here. It actually has a little compartment that it is held in. And then you just put it right on the top. Right there. And there you go. And you can put Cliff Dagger in here. And he is ready to attack Mask. And the other mask item I picked up is this 100% complete with box Raven. Of course, this is from series two. All right, and here's the close up of Raven, which is a Corvette from series two of Mask in 1986. Great, sleek looking ride. Here is the box. Again, it has that great artwork on it in attack mode. Different side art there. Shows the toy on the back. And this one actually has the Raven instructions inside. And let me get the driver out here. So these just flip down, these doors, like that. And inside is Calhoun Burns in his Gulliver mask. And the Raven vehicle has seat belts. So let me get him out of there. There he is. Standard articulation for mask. Calhoun burns. There he is. He looks like a stand-up guy to me. Let's go over mask back on. And so let me show you the action features of the Raven vehicle. Um, right here on this side is a little button. You see it right there. So all you have to do is press it. Boom, front flips over. And then you can just snap the wheels over like that. And then the wheels have these little guns that pop out. Like that. So they become kind of like front guns. It's pretty cool. And then uh, you hit the bumper or this little button here, the which I guess would be the license plate, and the spoiler pops up, revealing those jets. Which is great. And you can flip these down for the wings. Revealing the stickers and the mask logo there. These wheels flip under and again have those guns that can pop out of the wheels. And then this also has one extra feature. Um, inside the front here are little orange discs. There's two of them in there. But what you have to do, you have to cock the vehicle which is this little button right here. So you just pull it back like that. You hear that click? And then there's a little button on top between the doors right here. And just press it down and the disc goes flying out. But you have to cock it each time.
boom, goes flying out. And then what you have to do is just slide them back in. Like that. So this is an incredible mask vehicle. I really like this one. And it is an, in stellar shape. I swear it wasn't even played with. It looks so good. Uh, plus it came with the box, which is, you know, always a plus. So there is the Raven with Calhoun Burns. And as you know, I am picking up Rambo and the Force of Freedom figures lately. I found this white dragon. It's got a little discoloration mark there. And his head is a little discolored um, due to age. That was, of course, white when it was pristine coming out of the package. But other than that, he's in, you know, he's in pretty good shape. He didn't come with a lot of his accessories, only this backpack. Um, I can't even keep the backpack on him because it doesn't have the straps. It came with the red straps, uh, like most of the other Rambo figures did. It came with the various colored straps. But the action mechanism works on the backpack itself. So it would go on like this, and then there's a little button there on the bottom. And you would slide it over to the side, and it would whip around to the front. And boom, he would have access to his sword. Uh, just like that. So, hopefully I'll be able to find the additional pieces for this figure. At least the red straps for the backpack. Um, so he can keep that on. Then I also found this great gripper figure. He is obviously with Savage. And why have we learned he is with Savage? And it's obvious because he has an eye patch. Not only does he have an eye patch and a beret, he also has a hand attachment. This guy lost his hand and put a claw in its place. So you know this guy is evil to the core. So this is Gripper. Um, obviously he has this here on his hand. He has this set of four Uzis on this attachment in his backpack. He's got a machete here. Um, the gear mechanism that shoots this outward is not working. So I'll just leave it alone right now. He has a, uh, another a leg holster here for um, another pistol, but I do not have that pistol. And he also came with a green shield that covered up this set of guns. I don't have that either. Um, but he is in really good shape and also came with his collector's card, which listed all of his weapons on the back. And that's how I know that I, I'm missing that Beretta pistol. But um, still, uh, happy to add him to my Rambo collection. And then finally, the third Rambo figure that I found is this very rare Series 2 Whip Action General Warhawk. He's a tough one to come by, guys. He does not have any of his accessories, and his head is discolored. I don't really know what happened to his head. It's even on his neck. It's almost as if like some bleach got poured on him or something. I don't know, but as rare as this figure is, I was not going to leave him behind. Um, he does not have his whip. He came with this rifle, which is a part of the regular General Warhawk figure, but I really don't think it's a part of the whip action one from, from Series 2. Um, and this whip action is pretty simple. He's got a button on the back here, right there, and then you just press it up and down, and he would whip Rambo into shape, if you will. And uh, that's, that's Evil Savage for you, right? Um, other than that, he's in good shape. Like I said, his head is discolored, but what are you going to do, right? Uh, he's, he's rare, and I am happy to bring him home into my Rambo collection. And you know how I like those weird oddball lines of the 80s? I think Sectars fit that mold relatively well. Um, so I found some Sectars figures there that I didn't have. This is Heroic Pinzor from the good Sectars from Coleco. 
same people that did the Rambo line. And uh, he's a pretty good looking guy, you know, he's got that uh, pretty thick mustache. So you know he's a no messing around type of guy, you know, when you got a thick mustache like that. He has various weapons, he's got his belt with him. There's another pistol in there, and there's another one there. He also came with his sword and his shield to carry into battle. And uh, this is just one of those weird, obscure lines, you know, bug men that they created. Um, I, I dig it though. And they had that shiny paint, you know, to make it look like insects too. And of course they had antennae. And it was, it was just a cool cartoon as well. And I think there was maybe five episodes in the cartoon in uh, 1984. This is uh, one of the good sectars, Pinzor. Also, I found the giant battle beetle, which basically serves as one of the sectar's vehicles. And he's in a really good condition. He's got those giant claws and fangs. And a sectar could sit here if you were able to actually fit them in that seat. <laughs> and they have the real fur here as well. So that's pretty neat. And then basically the gimmick was you put your hand in this glove. Right? And you would put it through this one plastic piece and then put it through that ring and it would activate the claws as you would move your finger back and forth. So that's pretty awesome. I believe uh, the Battle Beetle came with Pinzor. So uh, that was cool to find them together at the toy exchange this time. And I mean, come on, how cool is that? There's a lot of 80s action figure lines that have vehicles, but how many have giant bugs to ride on, right? Um, so I think this is, this is a pretty, pretty wicked concept for a toy. And then finally, I found the Night Fighting Dargon with glow-in-the-dark features. He has a sword here, shield, and then he also has a weapon down here, a gun. He does not have his belt chest piece that most of these figures had. Um, and the unique feature of Night Fighting Dargon is that these antennae actually glow in the dark and how cool it still works after all of these years he can night fight so what kid wouldn't want a glowing sectar head in their collection and the last item i picked up at the toy exchange is this ace mcleod figure from the centurions he's not complete but he has a few of his accessories, and most importantly, he does have his helmet. This is usually what everybody wants. But I really didn't buy him for what accessories he has, because I already have a complete Ace McCloud from Centurions. I bought him to display the orbital interceptor that I have. So here Ace is in the orbital interceptor. Unfortunately, the one I have isn't complete. It's missing uh, some stickers in the front and uh, the blue chest piece that comes out here as well as the red uh, pulse bombs or whatever they were that go on his feet. Um, but other than that, it does have the missile and the rockets on the back and the satellite. So again, the great thing about this line is that they made so many different um, modules that could be attached to this, the, the basic Centurion figures and you can interchange them. Prices are really on the rise on these guys, so if you guys find Centurions out there uh, for a good price, I highly recommend you, you snag them now. So that's it guys, that's what I picked up at the Toy Exchange in Mount Airy, Maryland. Great store, great staff. If you're ever in the area, in the DC area, Baltimore, I highly recommend you check that place out. 
Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel at Rees Retro Toys for all of your toy hunting needs. Thank you for watching guys and keep on hunting.